Hey everybody, welcome to the Whatcast's look at the Warhammer Underworld Shadespire expansion, Spike Claw Swarm. Uh, this is the last in our series of videos uh, looking at the different universal ploys uh, that are going to be available uh, within Spike Claw Swarm. Uh, and again, uh, just to reiterate the idea behind this series is that these are my unvarnished opinions uh, and immediate opinions upon my first time seeing these cards. I've just opened this package. Uh, I have not seen any of these cards prior to now unless they've been featured on Warhammer Community. And again, these are going to be the universal ploys that you're going to get out of the Spike Claw Swarm expansion. These are going to affect your entire meta. It's going to affect your builds, even if you're not playing Spike Claw Swarm. And it's going to be very important to be familiar with this if, uh, as we're aiming on this channel, you want to take a serious, strategic, competitive level play look at Shadespire. All right, getting right into it. Um, first, we have Curious Inversion. Uh, this is complicated. Uh, for the first attack action in the next activation, Hammer characteristics become dagger characteristics and vice versa, and dodge characteristics become shield characteristics and vice versa. Okay, so this is uh, similar to what we've seen before with the Blood Rain card uh, in Corn Bloodbound. Um, it's going to be very specific, almost in my opinion, too specific to find much use because this is going to depend entirely on your opponent's stats. Uh, but if your, if your personal half of this equation uh, happens to be affected by this already, uh, for example, if you're playing uh, a faction that has daggers for attacks uh, or dodges for defense, uh, I do... you can uh, arrange that uh, advantageously for yourself. I'm just worried that for a lot of your opponents, it's actually going to be just as advantageous for your opponent. Uh, definitely going to be uh, the province of very skilled players to use this efficiently in a way that's going to make it worth spending one of your 10 upgrade slots, or sorry, ploy slots. All right, next we have Last Chance. Reaction, play this during an attack action that would take a friendly fighter out of action. Roll a defense dice. If the result would not normally be a success for this fighter, ignore the damage from that attack on this fighter. Okay, that's strange. Um, if the result would not normally be a success for this fighter, so you want to deliberately fail. Uh, that means that... This is going to be stronger on a weaker unit, uh, perhaps somebody that has uh, dodge defense like Spulkral Guard, but this can be a possible get out of jail free card uh, if you're playing something like uh, Spulkral Guard, Corn Bloodbound, uh, or Spike Claws Swarm. Uh, an interesting card. I'm generally not a fan of ploys that involve a dice roll. Um, but uh, if you're playing one of those factions, they are going to come after a critical unit on your side. And a 50% chance is going to be better than nothing. Um, or in this case, let's see, I think this would actually be a... 66% chance of getting out of jail free. Um, yes, it would. Because uh, it would... Yeah, this would essentially be uh, if we were playing Warhammer or uh, if we were playing 40k or Age of Sigmar this would be analogous to an extra 3-up save as a one-shot. Uh, so the more I think about this card, 
the more useful it seems to me, but only in certain decks and for certain factions. Alright, Momentary Madness. Choose an enemy fighter and roll an attack dice. If they, if you roll a hammer or a crit, so a 50% chance, make an attack action with them as if they were a friendly fighter. Fighters do not provide support for this attack action in attack or defense. Okay, so again, it's a ploy with a 50% chance, but like a lot of the other 50% chance ploys, uh, this could be game-changing uh, for your current board state. This can penalize your opponent for having uh, adjacent fighters, which we're seeing a lot of things in the meta uh, that are going to encourage that um, and it can also penalize your opponent for having a powerful attack which everybody has at least one uh, with cards like uh, heroic strike uh, with characters like bloodied sec or uh, fuel grimnir doing high amounts of damage with an attack um, this can be a nice hedge against that. And also, uh, with cards that we've seen, uh, for example, the objective card uh, in our in uh, one of our previous videos, I think two videos back, uh, where you want everyone on the field to be somewhat isolated, this can be a great way to bring that about. Very interesting, and this is going to definitely shake things up. Um, and cause more skilled players to be a little bit more cagey with the way they play, just with the expectation that this card might come out. Sacrificial Pawn. Choose a friendly fighter. If they are taken out of action in the next activation, you gain a glory point. Um, this is... It may not seem like it, but this is kind of a defense card. Think of it like um, uh, Insensate uh, or a number of other cards that are meant to see the next big hit coming and to prevent it. This doesn't actually prevent it, but it is going to disincentivize your opponent from doing it. And with... Uh, particularly with uh, Sepulchral Guard and Spike Claw Swarm, getting certain advantages specifically for losing one of your characters. This it goes into that new playstyle that's starting to develop within the meta. Um, an interesting play, this is going to be on the high side of situational. Um, I would definitely like to see how this operates in the future. I love the art on it. Poor, I think this is Basha, uh, being used as a, a hero, an orc shield. And he just, he still seems so happy about it. Okay. Spoils a battle. Play an upgrade card. This doesn't cost a glory point. Whoa, damn. Okay. This is a huge game changer. Um, there are so many builds that can be absolutely stopped dead in their tracks if you can't get that first upgrade on the field. Um, or if you can't get a certain upgrade on the field. This, this is great. It almost seems like an auto-include uh, for just about any style of deck. Um... I love it. Um, this is going to really open up different opportunities for different builds that have been uh, suboptimal in the past. Wow, great card. Okay. Blinding Flash. Play this during an attack action with a range of three or greater before any dice are rolled. The attack's characteristic of that attack action is changed to daggers one, huh? Um, okay, uh, well this is another card similar to the, uh, I believe it's called Darkness Descends, uh, that we saw in the Chosen Axes expansion. 
uh, meant to mess up a ranged attack. Uh, it seems a little less useful, honestly, because it's predicated on a range of three or greater, uh, which is very few attacks that exist within the game now. If it had been two or greater, uh, this could mess up spear users, it could mess up Karsus the Chained. Um, but that being said, uh, much like what I said about Darkness Descends, uh, this, this usefulness is going to be dependent on how the meta develops with future expansions. We know uh, the Vanguard Hunters are coming and they will probably be heavily focused on three range attacks. But for now, I wouldn't bother with this. It's going to be just too situational to put into your tournament deck. Rebound. Play this during an enemy attack action that would succeed. Roll defense dice on a roll of dodge or crit, so effectively a 5-up save. The attacker suffers the damage rather than the target, and neither fighter is driven back. Okay, uh, it's got a very low chance of occurring, but it's a great... Uh, It's a great way to turn the situation around, uh, especially with a lot of attacks uh, or a lot of characters having enough power to kill themselves in one shot. Um, and as the play style of a Superman deck becomes more popular, I think this is going to be a great way to hedge against that. Um, but the design of the card is such that it's not completely tied to a given situation, uh, which gives it a little bit more versatility, makes it slightly more likely that you would use it in your Take All Comers tournament deck. I like it. Rethink strategy. Uh, I love the picture here. It's all steel hard, I guess. Uh, thinking, gosh, maybe I should try strategy this time. Discard any number of objective cards and draw that number of objective cards. Okay, so we've seen this card before uh, in Trust to Luck uh, for your power cards. Um, being able to do that with uh, your objective cards gives you a second chance at a mulligan. However, uh, the I have the same problems with this that I do with using a mulligan in general. Typically, if you find yourself doing this a lot, you have built your objective deck poorly. Um, this definitely seems like a card designed for the novice player to keep them in the game, which is good. Those should exist. Uh, there's a reason why First Order Optimal Strategies exist in games. That's to make them more accessible. Um, I would struggle to think of a situation in which... This is going to be a good move uh, for a very tightly designed deck being driven by an experienced player. Shatter Shard. Choose an enemy fighter and choose one of their upgrades. Roll an attack dice on a roll of hammer or crit, so a 50% chance that upgrade is discarded. Okay, this is great. Um, this is a ruin your day card. Uh, as much as we've seen a lot of powerful builds uh, being accessed by the use of a particular uh, upgrade on a particular character, uh, and being that is part of their major win condition, this is a great counterplay. Um, in fact, because there is so much of a focus on upgrades in this game, uh, this is getting very close to auto-include territory for me. Um, just for its counterplay potential. Um, where this is going to really reward the experienced player is for players that have a very good understanding of the meta, a very good understanding of the available upgrades in the game, and the ability to spot just how critical a particular upgrade might be to your enemy's plan, this could be extremely powerful. Uh, again, though, this is a 50% ploy, so you are at the mercy of the dice on this, but 
if you pull this off, it can be a game winner. Okay, and finally, we have Desperate Gambit. When resolving the first attack action in the next activation, you and your opponent roll off. The winner chooses whether the attack action fails or succeeds. Huh. That's... On first blush, that sounds kind of pointless to me. Uh, because... You're just replacing a die roll with another die roll. Um, you're choosing which attack action that's going to be applied to because it's going to be on the first attack action in the next activation. Um, so I suppose for an experienced player who's going to be very aware of the statistical chances of a particular attack or... Uh, attack or defense failing uh, you can replace the existing statistics with essentially a 50% shot um, very much a corner case and very it's a very subtle benefit um, I would not probably I don't see myself using this personally uh, again I'd be interested to know everybody else's opinions down in the comments um, but right off hand, this does not particularly excite me. Um, not so much because it's not that big a deal to have, uh, to be able to trade a, you know, 75 or 80% chance for a 50% chance or, you know, a, you know, 10 or 20 or 30% chance for a 50% chance. I'm just not sure that it's worth one of your 10 ploy slots but all that being said um, again these are my first impressions uh, with no research done beforehand and I have not seen these used in the meta so I may end up eating my hat later on um, but that being said that's the last of our universal cards for the Spike Claw Swarm expansion for Warhammer Underworld Shadespire. I hope this has been useful to you, uh, and I would love to hear your opinions. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe for more Warhammer, Warhammer Underworld's tactics content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.